Ever since I did the Reaper vs. Pro Tools videos, which is one of my biggest videos, by the way, people have been asking me to do one of these for all of the major DAWs. And sure, I could drag this on forever. You know, Cubase vs. Reaper, Reaper vs. Logic, etc., etc. But I've always prided myself on getting to the point and shown pride in the audience that won't settle for having their time wasted. Which brings us to today, the ultimate DAW war. Which is the best of them all? It's Reaper. Who said that? Anyways, by the end of this video, you'll know which is the perfect DAW for you or if it's time to change your workstation and workflow altogether. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and before we dig too deep, I wanna explain something. There is no best DAW. Yes, there is. Like I was saying, there's no best DAW. There's only the perfect DAW for you and your situation. So as we go through this, we're gonna list all the major DAWs like Cakewalk, Harrison Mixbus, Audacity, obviously I'm trolling. I'm not saying you can't make something slap in those DAWs, but let's be for real. We're gonna talk about the major players today. Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, Ableton, Reaper, Fruity Loops, and Studio One. Let's start this off with the one that I have the iffiest feeling about. Number one, Logic. I'm gonna list the benefits of Logic first before going too deep on the negatives. If you're familiar with the software that's known for notoriously being lackluster, GarageBand, you'll feel right at home with its big brother, Logic. Coming in at a starting price of $200, Logic is extremely popular amongst Mac users. If I had to pin this one, I would say Logic is aimed at home studio enthusiasts and musicians. It's one of those all-in-one DAWs that doesn't just have stock plugins, but one that have okay GUIs and emulate some hardware gear. Um, what's that red one with the white tri- Oh yeah, that's the subscribe button. Make sure to hit that, tap the notification bell, and like this video because my transition game is still crazy. At face value, Logic is pretty solid. It even has the ability to use Dolby Atmos, unlike a few other dolls we're gonna talk about. But there are some major problems with Logic. First, I want to mention it has a very clunky file management system compared to, well, most DOS. Kind of a clunky user interface, but most importantly, its biggest downfall is it's exclusive to Mac. That's right, no PC. And since 75% of the planet uses PC, that alienates you from working with three out of four people. Project sharing isn't great either, and there are just better options out there. Yeah, a few big producers use Logic, Cool. They're unicorns and shouldn't be considered the example you use to pick this one up unless you're fine working on music for yourself in the foreseeable future. Also, the tutorials for Logic are kind of terrible. Yo, feel free to hit your boy up if you guys need some tutorials done right. Just putting that out there. Number two, Fruity Loops. You probably didn't think I was gonna throw this one into the fire so early on, but let's talk about it. Fruity Loops is without a question the best beat making software. Its piano roll, MIDI functions, and ability to make 808 slide from note to note is unparalleled. Many of the hit rap and pop songs you hear on the radio every day had the instrumentation done completely in Fruity Loops. It comes with its own synths, samples, and loading samples is a breeze. If you're going to grab this just for beat making, it's $100. But if you wanna use it to record Record with your mic and a few other perks, it's $200. I would strongly suggest just getting the $100 version because it's a terrible DAW to use to record vocals or instruments inside of. Guitar and vocal editing is a nightmare and I would never even think about trying to edit drums in this. For beat makers or even some EDM artists, Fruity Loops does sequencing like no other. This DAW is aimed at everyone from bedroom producers to the greatest beat makers in the world. There's even a phone app for this that actually works well. You know, most of the time when you have things like this on a phone, they work terribly, but this one's good. On to number three, Steinberg's Cubase. This is actually the first DAW that I ever used. I used Cubase 5 when people were actually supposed to be using Cubase 5. If you ever wondered why your VSTs automatically go to that Steinberg folder, it's because Steinberg created the VST and is the reason that we can use plugins today. Couple that with the mindset of a plugin designer like Joey and it's no wonder he used the DAW for so long. Unlike Logic, the navigation is seamless. And besides Fruity Loops, I consider it the most powerful DAW for MIDI production. Film scoring takes the cake with this DAW and it's ease of Use, which is why it's Hans Zimmer's DAW of choice. Built-in vocal tuning software means you don't need Melodyne, and the hit point detection in Cubase is my favorite of any DAW. All in all, 
This is one of the most capable DAWs period with a beautiful interface to boot. Negatives, bare minimum, you need Cubase Artist and that's gonna run you 340 bucks. Quite a bit pricier than the ones we mentioned thus far. Requires a dongle to use, which sort of feels like a joke to me for a DAW in 2022, but I digress. Also, Cubase performs a bit better on Windows than it does on Mac, but unlike Logic, at least gives you the option to use both operating systems. I kind of promised myself I wasn't gonna rip on Logic too hard this episode, but it's against my logic to use a DAW that I can't logically share a project with someone else or even open on my own operating system. <sighs> Get back on track. Cubase is great for professional mixers and film scorers. Number four, Ableton. One thing I wanna give praise for Ableton is, it's very easy to get simple to follow tutorials for almost everything. This is the EDM producer's DAW of choice, and I understand why. It's simple to use, the effects go across the bottom of the screen. The session view is a big win here in comparison to something like Fruity Loops. Uh, there's no need to be going in and out of tons of windows to get something sounding good. Comes with sample packs and instruments that are actually usable. Drum racks are amazing. Uh, the automation is so much easier to do in Ableton than it is in Fruity Loops. This is why EDM producers use it more because there's tons of automating filters and electronic music not so much in trap and hip hop. Also, the way it handles MIDI patterns is better than Fruity Loops. But after that, a few things come to mind. I'm not a fan of the automation controls for pre-recorded tracks in Ableton. I don't like the way the plugins are organized. It's a bit more CPU heavy than you would expect for a DAW that looks this primitive, but some people like it, not a big fan. Just my thoughts, and the cheapest actually usable version of this is $450. This is pretty expensive for what you're getting here in my opinion. Ableton played the long game of basically giving that light version away of this for what, 10 years or so? It feels like forever. Getting everyone hooked on it and then dropping the actual usable versions for $450 and $750 respectively. Little too much for what you're getting here, but if you're into EDM, you don't really have much of a choice because you'll just be a little bit slower in Fruity Loops. Just keeping it real with you. Number five, as for Studio One, Studio One kids are almost as annoying as Reaper kids, and I know that because I'm a Reaper kid. But notice how hard I tried not to mention the fact that I use Reaper for most of this video and didn't make it the number one. At least I try to hide how much of a fanboy I am, but Studio One kids say it's the greatest doll ever created. Well, let's see. Uh, I will say it has a very nice user interface off the bat. The workflow is very streamlined. It's like if you took away all those extra clicks you make in Pro Tools for no reason, but the issue that causes is a bit of a learning curve when you start. And I will say you can kinda get by with the artist version, which is 99 bucks. The jump from that to professional is 300 more dollars, so. I would just make it work if I had to. But that full version does include something pretty interesting. It's called harmonic editing. They describe it as such. In short, uh, they're referring to Studio One's ability to edit changes in pitch as easily as it can edit changes in time. That's a feature that I've never seen included in any DAW before. I'm gonna be honest here. I don't really know many cons for Studio One. Uh, I've heard of a couple bugs, but as I'm writing this, it might be higher up on the list than what I thought. Not that this list is in any order, I just mean my own personal list. Which is exactly how people feel when I talk about number six, Reaper. Yeah, you guys already know how I feel about this. I already did Reaper versus Pro Tools, so I'm gonna go over this quick. Let's get the Reaper fanboy out. Reaper can be purchased for 60 bucks. It's the most customizable DAW. You can make it look like other DAWs by changing the themes. The lowest latency of any DAWs mentioned, smallest install files, Easiest to color code, you can run multiple instances of it at once or tabs of different sessions in the same window. Uh, as far as keypad customization, macros, and scripts, it's the most powerful as well. And the drawback of Reaper is the default GUI doesn't look great. There's a bit of a learning curve to using it just like Studio One. And the drum editing in Reaper is not as good as it is in Cubase or Pro Tools, in my own personal opinion. Best bang for your buck DAW that has a community that will help you get off your feet. Reaper is aimed at the tinkering audio enthusiasts and professionals. Mostly ones that wish they had the ability to make their own DAW and they just customize it to be as such. And number seven, there's a reason I waited until now to end for Pro Tools. If by now you didn't realize that there are so many options out there, possibly better, I don't really know what to say. The industry standard just isn't really the industry standard anymore. Kanye's whole Donda album was made in Ableton and dropped into Pro Tools at the last second. But if you're working in the industry, 
you have to know your way around Pro Tools. You know, Pro Tools is actually solid for composition and the Beat Detective Editor is the best drum editing software that's automatic you're gonna find. Yes, it has its limitations in track count, insane cost, lack of features. Where was I going with this again? Oh yeah, I was trying to give it a redeeming factor. Well, they added folders not too long ago and you can make the screen black now. Thanks, Avid. So let's go over this one more time. Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, Ableton, Reaper, Fruity Loops, and Studio One. There is no right or wrong DAW, only what's right or wrong for you. Did I miss any major points that made you pick your DAW over others? Do you think that there's something else you might want to look at now? Let me know in the comments below and we will hash it out like we always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notification. So when a video drops, you know the location. Till next time, I am out of here. Mic drop, except as engineers we know, I never really dropped this thing, cause that get really expensive. Even if it is a piece of road. Yeah, it's not really a sure mic this time. But, but luckily I didn't drop it. Catch you guys next time.